promotional consideration paid for by the following. Hello and welcome once again to Quick Sharp Reviews. More new releases for you right here on Cheap Shot Entertainment Quick Shot Reviews. I'm your host Luke and you are the Cheap Shot Nation and today we're going to look at one film that I've been really looking forward to A Quiet Place Part 2! Usually Part 2 is not quite as good as Part 1 but I was pleasantly surprised by this one and my excitement was definitely well worth it I would go and see this again I do plan on getting this on Blu-ray when it comes out it is a fabulous film and it definitely plays on your senses as it's supposed to. So if you want to hear what I have to say about The Quiet Place Part 2 or A Quiet Place Part 2 then join us for the main part of the video. Place Part 2 was directed by John Krasinski who actually plays the dad uh, known as John Krasinski we see him very briefly in this film and was scheduled for release in 2020 but obviously a pandemic quite fitting really um, as we look at The Quiet Place and <clears throat> sort of compare it to what's been going off over the last year basically a virus, in this case it's a big virus because it's aliens, has ravaged through the world and basically taken a lot of lives and it's survival of the fittest. It um, was released in 2021 of course because no one was in the cinema and they didn't release it digitally, they held out so they could make the big coin and it has, it's currently top of the box office just above Cruella, another film that I really want to see. Um, actually a Disney film, a live action Disney film that actually makes sense. Um, so, following the story of the first one where they're, you know, they're basically trapped in their house and um, it is Emily, uh, sorry Emily Blunt is who plays Evelyn Abbott, Evelyn who gets pregnant and has the child. Obviously babies are not quiet but in this case the aliens are a bit like playing uh, The Last of Us on PlayStation. The monsters are clickers, so they rely on sound basically. So they click and that bounces the sonic waves back to the monsters and then they know where they're actually going. Um, so following the events at the home of the Abbott family, uh, now the Abbott family now face new terrors of the outside world, forced to venture into the unknown, of course John no longer with them, sacrificing himself for his family, um, <clears throat> they realise the creatures that hunt by sound are not the only threats lurking beyond the sand path which they got set out from their house. Of course the other creatures, the other dangers of course are human beings so this is definitely a play on you know modern society who are the real villains here is it the animals that hunt for food or is it the humans that hunt for fun you know that kind of thing so it's a case of although these alien things they don't hunt for for food they hunt for fun so you know there's kind of a thing there but the film, the film itself was very tense of course, Emily Blunt plays and reprises her role as Evelyn Abbott, Millicent Simmons delivers an outstanding performance again as Regan Abbott, the uh, deaf daughter of Evelyn, who basically the story revolves around because you know everything that she does she has to do silently. There are points in this film where she is the main focus of the film, everything goes silent, there's no sound whatsoever and it really brings you in 
to what she is feeling and it just does a fantastic job of delivering on a score when it needs to but doesn't use cheap jump scares. I think I count maybe one or two jump scares, the rest of it is very much a case of it being uh, dark and foreboding, you really want the, the main characters to come, come away from this unharmed, unscathed and you know just win and you want the alien creatures to get their asses kicked you know um, and it's something that's lacking in a lot of horror movies these days of this kind. Um, Noah Jupe reprises his role as the son, Marcus Abbott of course there is a baby involved here and obviously doesn't get a credit but you know babies the whole thing revolves around the family looking after this young young child who is constantly screaming and crying and things like that you know that's what babies do and um, you know that itself doesn't play a large part but there's always that hanging over the characters um, Killian Murphy reprises his role, well, I don't know if he reprises his role, but he plays Emma, of course, having previous experience as an actor being in an apocalyptic wasteland. He was in 28 days later, and 28 months later, actually he wasn't in 28 months later, was he? Uh, forget me, but he's well averse to this, um, Killian Murphy, and John Kransky, of course, reprises his role for the beginning where we see a prequel of the first one and then we go into the sequel of the first one. It's done quite well actually. Um, but like I say, this film, it plays on your senses. I was not bored one bit. I wanted the, the good guys to win and the bad guys to lose. And all this time there was lots of gore. Yes, the aliens are CG. Well, there is one particular scene, which I won't spoil, that was very much practical in the way it was done. And it, and it worked so, so well. Everything was thought out. Everything made sense. The feral people at the dock side. Everything. You know, um, we're talking about an apocalyptic wasteland here where, you know, people will turn on people. People have been turned on people for a long time. So why not? You know, you're in, you're in a mode of survival. Of course people are going to turn on people. That's just the way people are. Um, and, you know, it, a lot of it is about the foreboding of the alien creatures. But a lot of it is the foreboding of what your fellow person is going to do to you. You know, we've seen this many, many times in The Purge and, and uh, even 28 months later, of course. But... Yeah, this film, I think it's actually better than the first. Um, obviously, it expands on everything that happened in the first, and it takes it wider into the wider world, of course. And in the first one, obviously, it was based around the house and the one family. Now we're bringing in other characters. The first part of the film really brings in the new character that you know we get to see as well in, uh, in Emmett and his relationship with the Abbott family and it's an absolutely beautiful film with great atmosphere, scary scenes, not too many jump scares and that gets an up from me. So what is my verdict on A Quiet Place Part 2? It is definitely go watch it, give this money your give this money give this movie your money because it is absolutely worth it it's well worth the wait um unlike the conjuring in my opinion this one actually knows how to set things up and do all the sort of shock and scare and gore and all that kind of stuff i know the conjuring is not really about gore but this is the way to do a movie it is beautifully shot it is beautifully scored and that's saying that most of this film is absolutely silent and sometimes that is what you need in a horror movie to get the suspense you don't know where it's coming from but when it does it's good so cheap shot nation if you've seen a quiet place part two then please leave a comment down below let us know what you thought of the film also i am on now now on letterboxd so go and follow 
cheap shot entertainment or quick shot reviews on Letterboxd as well. There'll be reviews and things on there. We'll start the discussion there. This channel seems to be doing really, really well. So I'm going to keep bringing you all the movies that you require and all the movies that I love to watch. So I will see you next time. Thank you very much for watching and goodbye.